Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from beautiful Beta Albania, one of two UNESCO World Heritage Ottoman medieval towns in the country. This place is gorgeous. Yesterday, we explored the whole town. We saw the museum. We went to the castle. We went, you know, we walked around, bought a souvenir. And after that, we drove to a winery, tried some wines, some rakia, and then finally, we had dinner right here at the Castle Park Hotel, which is where I slept last night. Amazing, slept like a baby. Slept like only six hours, but it's fine. And then today what we're gonna do is we're gonna have breakfast here. We're gonna learn how to make petula, which is Albanian donut. You mix it with like marmalade and jam. Oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And then after this, we're gonna drive over to the city of Albasan. We're gonna see the castle, some more you know historical sites. And then from there, we're gonna drive straight to Lake Ored to the town of Povradats. All right, guys, let's do this. This is the petula. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, amazing. Thank you. So, Alma, this is how you make petula. But you're saying it has to be like boiling hot oil. Yes. If not, it doesn't yes. absorb the oil, yes. right? Mm -hmm. This is the secret. The secret. The secret that the okay. oil must be very hot. Okay. And uh, don't put a lot of petula inside. Okay. Only three or four. Okay. So they don't take oil. And this is, these are smaller because I actually had like big ones. No, yesterday. we do smaller and we eat with butter that okay. we do in this mood. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Here we will do like this. Okay. And with the jam, glico is a kind of uh, yeah, 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 the best. Do, yes. Oh, so and good. The best. So basically, so, you mix it with like marmalade or with honey, yes, butter, with honey and with cheese. And with cheese. Uh, depend of uh, how they want the tourists, but tourists. Come here at Castle Park only for petula. For petula? Uh, yes. And oh for my god. Liqueur. Okay, perfect. So I'm, I'm hungry. Like, yes, let's go eat. Yes, we are ready. Yes. Perfect. Ooh. So this is your homemade bread. Yes. This is like a monster bread. Oh, it smells so good. Yes. It smells sweet. Like, it smells sweet. <laughs> yes. This one has corn? The, yes, the hair has it's a corn. little bit. Okay. And uh, oil of olive. Oh, but this is so good. Perfect. We leave a little bit to soak to... Mm. And we will put water before. Because in Albania, uh, yogurt with uh, water we call thou. By the way, I've never seen butter being made. Yeah? I've never seen it. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> So it takes 10 to 15 minutes to mix the water with the yogurt to make butter. Yes. Wow. The most fresh butter and the eat with bread. It's the best. It's the best. Yes. Sure. Sure. I, I'm super happy I'm here. Okay, it's my turn. So. Oh my god. Yeah, it's not easy. It's yes. not easy. You're in that big way, Yes. <laughs> so she just pulled it up and you can see it's starting to form the butter. It takes another like 5-10 minutes so I think that's good. Alright my friends, let's dive on this food. What a feast. He's back, he's back. Yeah. Er, John, you How awake? are you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's a good um, sunrise. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. Overlooking the mountain here. So beautiful. And here my friend, we have homemade butter. Very this is crazy. This is a feast. Right here we have delicious eggs with like some herbs. We got fresh butter. We have harbo eggs. We have fermenguez. We have glico. Petola. Petola right here. And this over here is what? What is this one? Love. After we do butter, we take butter and we have the this. The rest is love. It's yogurt with Whoa. butter. But in our family, it's super fresh. So differently, we call it Albanian Red Bull. So it gives you power. She just poured this from where she made the butter. She took out the butter and all the excess, all that like super liquidy yogurt, basically, is what the tal, tal. Lal. 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 It's hard to say. <laughs> Some eggs, delicious. The most delicious thing you can have for breakfast in Albania. 
So lots of eggs for the breakfast here. Shake one cheese there. This place is famous for their olives. Berat is the like the number one producer of olives in all of Albania. And here we have the petula. So get like two petulas. So let's get some butter right here. Put it right there. Wow. Look at this. The butter literally is melting on the bread. Mmm. Oh wow. The bread's fluffy. Has corn. Mmm. So here we have the same butter. Just obviously they made it earlier. I'm not a huge butter guy, but that was probably the best butter I've ever had in my life. Like straight up. That was so good. Now I'm gonna have some of these eggs. These eggs are great, man. With some herbs. Delicious. Some onion. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Red pepper, green pepper. They love red and green pepper, right? That's like yeah. the biggest thing here. Mm -hmm. This for guests has scrambled eggs, cheese, red, and green pepper. Mm. What makes it so good is that fresh goat cheese. Like, so fresh. And over here, I have a bunch of jams, right? So I'm just gonna try this one. I don't even know what this is right now. What is this one? No idea, right? Super soft dough. I love the golden texture around it. Mmm, and this is quince marmalade. This one's a cherry one. Nuts glico, which is uh, so special. This takes uh, 60 days to prepare, you know? The difference between glico and marmalade is what? Basically, this is still the whole, like, fruit. Yeah. That's not. They take the nuts, put in the water, they need to change for around 30 days every day the water so the nuts will lose uh, you know because it's still not yet uh, ready to eat it mm. super delicious like gummy bear you know it's like a gummy gummy sensation oh it's like the it's like straight up syrup here mm. and over here we have fig lico it's a really big fig it's got a bite into it, it's like a mouthful of fig. Explodes in your mouth with this like delicious, I guess it's, I mean the water is almost like a syrup, like honey, you know? Super like thick, but at the same time, not so thick as honey. I don't even know what else to eat, it's so much. Come to Castle Park, sleep here at night. When you wake up, you can have this feast and you can watch how they make the butter. The betula as well, I mean the betula, it's very easy and then right here, Finish it off with some fermingas. Mmm, one last bite. Huge breakfast. Rakia. Rakia. Yeah, guys, we're not drinking rakia this morning. Just water. Wow, the birds. The weather. Nice and cool. Hello, buddy. Are you ready for El Basan? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. So we have a one hour drive to Albasan. Yeah, around one hour. Perfect, then we're gonna see so, a castle. Yeah. So David, this town is so famous for having a refinery of oil, of diesel. So in this town, they should be very rich people. But unfortunately they are not because all are private uh, now. But as you can see this guy, so he's checking how many liters of, uh, of diesel, of oil he has in on, uh, on his uh, water, on his tanks, you know. Wow. Yeah. And what's the name of the town? Uh, this town is called Kuchova. Kuchova, Kuch yeah. So uh, you can see all around there are a lot of uh, refineries producing fuel. So yeah, so there's a lot of oil refineries here and this is only like a 10 minute drive from Bera going on the way to Albasan. Still around 45, 50 minutes from Albasan. But over here to the right, you see tons of oil refineries. So we stopped here to see this machine pulling out the oil. As you can see, it's extracting the oil and then it sends it down a pipe. I guess the tanks like the ones we saw before. Yeah, yeah. Similar scenario. And I guess the reason why this town isn't extremely rich is because this is all privatized now, you were saying, yeah, right? privatized. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's go, bro. We've been driving for half an hour and we see tons of hills, lots of farmers, people, you know, goat herders, turkey herders, uh, got olive groves, 
I mean, beautiful hills. Over here, we just made a right to Alasan, and then over here to the left, you can go to Belch to go to, to where we went yesterday yeah, exactly. to see the lake, right? But if you keep going straight, in about 30 minutes, we're almost there, yeah. Albasan. And yeah, another beautiful hot day in Albania. Albania. So we stopped here to save a tortoise, small guy, right? Oh man, there's one right here. So every time you see the tortoises, if you see them in the road, just stop, get them, move them, leave them. That's it, that's the best thing to do because if not, they're gonna get hit. I literally had to stop like four cars because this guy almost got killed. Oh, let's go. Okay guys, so we made it to Albasan, and right in front of us, we have the castle. The castle, the castle of Albasan. So we are going to explore the castle inside. That's uh, the main attraction of El Basani. And uh, El Basan means a conquered city. So this castle was built when uh, it was conquered by Ottomans. And this is Abasan. Huge cities. Uh, we said second largest? Uh, no, it's the fourth largest. Fourth largest city? Okay. So walking through here, as you can see, we have a park over here. We have lots of cafes, restaurants, supermarkets and the castle is right there. And this is the center center of town, right? Yeah. And these are the walls of the castle built in the 15th century by the Ottomans. A short castle, I mean, it's only like 30, 40 feet high. Lots of towers, obviously. Towers here, tower there, so many towers. It actually reminds me of the walls of the city of Lugo. Lugo in beautiful Galicia, Spain. Very similar style. That was actually built by Romans. This one's not. This was built by the Ottomans, 15th century. And then the entrance is right over here. So we're gonna go in the castle, we're gonna walk around, we're gonna explore, and then we're gonna exit through the other way. This place dates back to Roman time. When the Romans arrived here, they first built Via Ignatia, which was 1,120 kilometers long. Starting from Rome, Italy, from Duras, which was called Durazzo, all the way to Macedonia, Bulgaria, and uh, Istanbul today. So we are going to see a part of that road, but you will see a mixture of Roman time and Ottoman time. So similar to Bera, this is a living castle, meaning people still live inside, people are born here every day. But unfortunately, that's not a UNESCO, so people uh, can rebuild their style, the houses. So you can see some are very new, some are very old. Yeah, so this is like more modern, you know, some old stone buildings, but most of them are rebuilt. Yeah in like the 1990s, 80s, 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks very, very different. Lots of different colors. Typical architecture during the 1950s. So this uh, wood is to protect the building, the wall, in case of earthquake. So this will balance the wall. You can see it's not straight, but it goes like... We are now in front of King's Mosque, which was, which is the first mosque that was built in Elbasan after they conquered the Elbasan, Ottomans they built this mosque dates from 1492 so this is renovated of course so always uh, when people go and pray uh, left side is for females and right side is for males or vice versa and inside when they go to pray the second floor is for females so you know the practice of uh, muslims so they have to wash their hands in front of the mosque so that was the mosque and right across from it we have a church apostolic church of elbasan so you can see the sign there and this is via ignata yeah, exactly here was like uh, the entrance all the way to istanbul so this was a kind of a border in elbasan so to go through istanbul uh, to go all the way to, all the way to istanbul you have to cross this uh, let's say border because it was you have to go inside the castle cross the castle then you can continue your way all the way uh, Istanbul, which was 1,120 kilometers, about 700 miles long. I've actually been to a few of these, like in Sofia they have it, yeah. you can see it. Yeah, there are uh, some parts like where, where you can still see the, the original stones, they are polygonal. So next we are going to see uh, this beautiful restaurant, but we are not going to sit just to have a look, Scampi restaurant. Scampi was the, is the old name of El Basan. So Scampi was called during the Roman time and we are going to see uh, they are keeping and saving some uh, pottery from the past, some statues. This is a gorgeous restaurant here along the walls. So you see that's the exit, right? So you yeah. exit the entire castle there. Over here we have the walls and we have many different places to eat. So you can eat up here in this terrace. You can eat inside in the garden area. And they have another terrace over here. Beautiful spot. So once you come down the staircase next to the exit, under the building, you can see 
Roman ruins. This is the old Roman city. And it's like walls, right? That's walls to different houses, I'm guessing. It could be anything, really, but it's different walls. The good thing is the entrance is for free. So at, uh, when you enter into, inside the castle, you can have a coffee, can see the, the history, which is under, under the walls of the restaurant, and the beautiful garden. So this garden usually used for, to arrange some private uh, celebration. And that's it, guys. We explore the castle. There's the exit. My man, we can't go up, right? Yeah, this is closed, but that's it. I mean beautiful living castle See the mosque see the church see the street and then come to this restaurant have a coffee have breakfast have lunch But every time you're here just come here for sure because this is beautiful look at this I've never seen a restaurant inside a castle like this. So now all the way to Pogradets a long drive so it's one and uh, 20 minutes probably so the only way to get to Borodets, which is on Lake Ord is to drive from Berat through Albasani. There's no other way to get there from Bera. So if you come from Tirana, you pass through here as well. You pass right through here and keep going. So we have about an hour before we get to Lake Ord. And if you guys don't know, Lake Ord is a lake that is bordered by both Albania and North Macedonia. On the other side, you have Ord and Struga, which are the two towns. Ord is a beautiful town. It's like 365 churches from Byzantine period. Really amazing spot. And then on this side, we have Povradets. And that's basically it for the lake. It's the deepest the lake. The deepest lake in, in the Balkan. It's about, the average depth is about 300 meters. And uh, is it, it is considered the oldest lake in Europe. So millions of years because it's a natural. And uh, what is special is uh, one of 10 uh, cities and uh, natural sites that is inscribed in UNESCO, right? So as a city and as a natural site, so as a lake and as a city of Ohrid, but not from Albanian part, but from a Macedonian side, North Macedonian side. So in a few moments we'll uh, see the first town, small town Libraj. And uh, as you can see the nature here is so beautiful, we have also a lot of parks, natural parks, all up in the mountain. So, but cannot wait to show you Ohrid Lake or Pogradets Lake, so it depends how you want to call it. So it's important is the same and it's so beautiful. So we just climbed up like a huge hill and once we went over it, there you can see Lake Ord. Beautiful dude. It's so blue. It's so ridiculous. Looks like a sea. Yeah. And the other side, also like on the other side of uh, Albania, I went to a monastery over there. Yeah, amazing. Saint Neo Monastery. Saint Neo Monastery. In fact, it was part of Albania, but uh, to it was given as a gift by our king in, during 1930s to Macedonia, to like uh, as a sign of uh, of relationship, good relationship they had at that time. So Saint Neo Monastery nowadays is uh, one of the most important sites for Mas North Macedonia. All right, we're gonna stop here and yeah. check out the view. So in front of uh, us we can see the Lin village which was the favorite village for our former leader of communist time Enver Hoxha. So he has his uh, private residence there and for that reason it still nowadays looks so beautiful from here. So now we're going through this village. Yes. And oh. yeah, so the village of Lin is uh, if you see any Albanian movies most probably the village of Lin will be inside the movie because most of them are recorded here in this part of Pogradeci. Pogradeci has a lot of beautiful villages, Lin, Tushemis, Drilon will go later in the park. So, And this is the village of Lin, as you can see, beautiful small village right here on Lake Ored. It is gorgeous, the view right here, just look at this, blue crystal clear water. If you want to, if you make it here for lunch, go to any of these restaurants, right? So they're all restaurants like on piers on the water. So you can literally eat, drink, whatever, right there, overlooking the entire lake. Over there is North Macedonia. That's it, right? Yeah, so if you plan to go Pogradets, uh, immediately when you come up in the in the hill, you'll see a very beautiful village from the top of the road, and uh, that's Lin. So before going to Pogradets, 10 minutes from Pogradets is this beautiful village with the crystal water, as David said. And that's it for the village, guys. Now let's go to Pogradets. Pogradets, our final stop. That's the village life for you. Cows everywhere. Cows everywhere. Literally walking yeah. through the center of the village. Village life. <laughs> so how far is it, 10 minutes? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. 
And so Pogradets is the main town on Lake Ord for Albania. Yeah, Pogradets is the main town, so it's it's the only city that uh, we can use the lake to, for swimming, like uh, like the seaside. So many people prefer Pogradets because the water is not salty and it's so fresh. And I thought the north of Albania was beautiful. This is like stunning, dude. Stunning. Right. Stunning. The yeah. blue with the mountains. It literally looks like the sky is in the, in the lake, you know? It's crazy. And this is Pogradets, the only city in Albania on Lake Orid. It looks amazing. We have like five hours to explore. We're gonna eat a lot of fish. We're gonna walk around a town. We might go on a boat. I mean, so many things to do here. And I hope you loved this video. We started off this morning in Berat at, at Castle Park Hotel. We had an awesome breakfast. We saw they make the donuts and we saw they made butter, which was really, really cool. Authentic, traditional, uh, just a process. I've never seen that in my life. The food was absolutely incredible. And then from there we drove one hour to Albasan. We saw the castle, we walked around, we saw the ancient road, a mosque. I mean, basically that's what you do there. And then we saw this village. Village. Beautiful village, right on the water, incredible views, stunning lake. This is Lake Orid, guys, in Albania. I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you next travel food adventure in Pogradets, Albania. Peace.